Clean fuels can help reduce greenhouse gas emissions, improve air quality, and make low carbon fuels more accessible. Its implementation can help the world take significant strides towards decarbonisation and help with the realisation of net zero targets. In this interview, we'll talk to GPS Renewables co-founders Mainak Chakrabarti and Sri Krishna Sankar about the company's innovative clean fuels technology and how the company has started to realise its potential. The resilience Chakrabarti and Sankar have demonstrated to get the company off the ground will be showcased as we dive into the world of clean energy. My name is Henry Wilkins, and this is A Moment With. Hi, hey, Maynag. Great to meet you. Hi, Hi. Sri Krishna. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thanks very much for being with us here today on A Moment With. It's really great that you managed to uh, spend some time with us. We'll jump right into the questions, if it's okay with you guys. Uh, so tell us, how did you guys first meet and start working together? Well, that goes back uh, around 12 years ago. Uh, I had opted out of the placements right after business school. Um, and I was very clear that uh, I wanted a co-founder. The answer ended up at our alma mater, which was the Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore. Uh, I knew that SK had tried something, uh, starting to start something when he was in his final year at business school. Uh, so we ended up meeting through common friends and all. We realized that our vision, some of the, the ideas we had around technology for good aligned, and that's how the journey started. So how did you start working together initially? Did you form a company immediately? So uh, initially, I think we spent quite a bit of time ideating on what we should work on. So we explored a lot of potential ideas even in the climate space, whether it is a plastics problem or the organic waste problem. So the, the formation of an organization was not there. We thought we will make a pilot, we will make a prototype of the solution, test the waters of how it goes. And you know, it was, a, it was an organic evolution into a company which happened subsequently, maybe after 20 to 15 months. So we were more experimenting and tinkering with what could be a solution at that time. So this was, there was, you know, there was no Eureka moment as such. Yeah. At the very beginning, you end up doing everything, you get your hands dirty. Uh, having said that, as the organization evolves, then the role separation, in most cases, you know, the role separation happen over, over, happens over time. And in our case, again, it was a reflection of, in a way, who we are. I think that has worked to our strength as well. We are, uh, as personalities, we are different, we are complementary. So over time, we aligned ourselves around our uh, strengths and I would say complementary strengths. Now. Thanks both. Let's step inside and we'll take a seat. So, Mainak, tell me a little bit about what biofuels are. Sure. Biofuels are a cleaner alternative to fossil fuels that we use every day across the world. They are generated from organic feedstocks. So that is the common feature. The end product is a perfect substitute for the, you know, the, for the fuels that we use uh, every day. And anyone from the biofuel industry, every, every person from the biofuel industry believes that sooner or later, most of the fossil fuels that we use across the world would be replaced with biofuels. We firmly believe that uh, that, is a, uh, that is extremely important from a climate change perspective as well. Question for you, uh, Sri Krishna. So what, what does GPS Renewables do as a company? So GPS Renewables builds technology and solutions primarily to convert what is termed as a waste, uh, waste input into green fuel. So the, the solutions, the technology and the engineering are all directed towards producing biofuels which are green and replace um, fossil fuels. Our technologies basically focus on converting these so-called waste inputs and converting them into green biofuels, primarily RNG. So that's what our core focus area is. So when was the company established? We started GPS uh, in 2012. We don't come from uh, a microbiological or chemical or process background. We are electronics and software engineers. Uh, we come from a very different field. So when we started off with this journey, we were not sure of what we are building. So we wanted to test the waters first. 2011, we set up our first prototype. And 
in around a year's time when we saw positive signs that's when you know we felt that maybe we are on to something which could be scaled up and also that's when we actually uh, registered the company so 2012 uh, is when gps was formally formed and you guys were working on this uh, company for many years before you really started to see a high level of success tell me a little bit about what that experience was like yeah it was not easy because uh, you know uh, it it took us almost 10 years to get there uh, we raised our series a funding after 8 years but uh, but you know we went with our belief we kept building uh, we didn't le lose hope uh, and we stayed you know so to say very gritty but long story short uh, uh, you know the key thing was that yeah it took its own sweet time i mean just to give an example un until in the first 8 years we could hardly reach a you know like a turnover stage of maybe around 2 3 million dollars today we are executing projects worth 250 million dollars we have a pipeline of around half a billion dollars and it's just the start uh, you know so so and that is uh, that is probably going to be the case with many you know companies in this particular sector maybe all what can what we can say from our own experience is that maybe it's important just hang around there uh, and you know maybe do wait for also fortune to you know uh, you know come uh, play on your side but but yeah i mean uh, uh, one has to be gritty one has to be resilient and all uh, that is what worked what that is what worked for us uh, in this in in our particular journey Maina, can you tell me what is the company's purpose and mission our mission is to be a change uh, to be a change agent for biofuels now the thing with biofuels is that it's not going to happen on its own. There are a lot of challenges involved in aggregating all these feedstocks and making these projects happen and all. And that's why, where we come in. Uh, the way we have formed GPS over the years, we have built capabilities across this entire spectrum. And over the years, as we have grown tremendously, I mean, that belief has only strengthened that, you know, uh, uh, today we can maybe say with a certain level of conviction that we have had a role to play in shaping of the whole biofuel, uh, uh, you know, in particular the biogas industry in India. Uh, and if we were to draw, uh, you know, extend that to the rest of the world, what we believe is that uh, the world, the biofuel industry would require, you know, companies like us who, who will have to make this happen and that is what our aspiration is our aspiration is that we would like to be seen as an indian company who you know uh, stamps its you know uh, so to say dominance in this particular sector and in the process make the world a better place and uh, sri krishna how has the company looked to initiate a circular economy so so primarily the solution that we provide whether it is for uh, urban waste generation um, generators or for uh, like hotels or restaurants in the cities to large municipalities which produce a lot of municipal solid waste the solution that we provide completes a circle uh, the waste that gets generated today gets dumped into the landfills where they have stray methane emissions and lead to a lot of global you know how ghg emissions and lead to higher levels of co2 in the atmosphere we convert that into green fuel that green fuel is then used as a replacement for the uh, natural gas or the fossil fuel so that completes one level of uh, impact wherein we replace their fossil fuel consumption by our green fuel generation so there is a cycle in which the uh, there is no waste that is finally generated from the project itself the fu the fuel replaces fossil fuels the compost replaces uh, chemical fertilizers and then puts it back into the cycle in terms of production of food so that's how uh, we intervene in terms of bringing the circularity in the organic uh, waste uh, uh, su supply chain. And you've already touched on my, some, what I wanted to ask for the next question for you, Sri Krishna. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your activities in Indoor and how this uh, fully demonstrates what your company can do? So uh, Indoor uh, as a city is generating somewhere around 500 to 600,000 kilograms of municipal solid waste every day. Now the, the Indoor Corporation decided to move towards a, you know, upgraded technology, much more modern technology of converting that into biofuels you know, bio like uh, renewable natural gas and that's where GPS 
uh, came into the picture as a technology and engineering partner. Today what happens in Indore is that the entire waste is collected in a uh, segregated manner brought to our project site where it gets processed and gets converted into high quality uh, biofuel, you know, renewable natural gas. Now the, the impact of this is that uh, if not for this uh, project, then all these uh, waste that would have been generated would have created a huge GHG emission because it would have gone into the landfills where it would have led to stray methane emissions. It would have led to air pollution and it would have affected the health as well as the water of the city. So the, the sustainable development goals of a city are, uh, many of them are achieved by a single solution. So we have a multi-dimensional sustainable uh, development impact on the city itself with a single project. And how do you expect the technologies developed by GPS renewables to benefit other countries in the global south? Uh, when, when you develop a project in India and execute in India, one of the core requirements that you need to focus on is it has to be financially viable. Uh, the, the customer's expectation would be to get the sustainable green fuels but with the financial uh, returns in mind. So we have, we have developed it in a country where uh, the solutions uh, are proving to be not only green and sustainable but they are also economically very, very viable for the customer. So the solutions which are proven in India are much more viable and much more uh, uh, you know, suitable for all these uh, locations in the global south and even in the developed nations. Many of the uh, developed economies today support some of these projects through certain government support and subsidies. But what we have demonstrated in India today in terms of execution is that these projects are viable on their own. They provide you great financial returns and they also provide you with a sustainable uh, alternative pathway to move away from fossil fuels. So this is what has enabled the industry to look at biofuel projects as a very, very financially viable asset uh, today. So this is very uh, clonable or, you know, ca ca you know blue the blueprint is as such reusable in any other developing nation and even in certain developed geographies. And, uh, you know, like uh, going beyond climate for a change uh, to and talking of geopolitics, since you asked about the Global South, I think for the Global South to become, you know, to come up, uh, uh, be at par with, you know, uh, the rest of the developed, you know, uh, economies, energy independence is extremely important. So if, if India can do this, any country from the Global South can do that because, again, the economic considerations, everything is quite similar. So, so that is where we feel, uh, you know, uh, biofuels can go even beyond climate change it's it's uh, it could become a very uh, you know powerful tool for energy independence as well so mainak Sri krishna thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us pleasure, yeah, pleasure.